Hello, everyone, and welcome to Small Town Big Business, a podcast about doing big business in rural middle America. I'm your co-host for today, Deb Barnett. I'm also with Southern (coughs) Illinois Now, where we focus on advancing the economy here in the 17 southernmost counties in Illinois, and advancing our region is a great place to live, work, and do business. And I'm Russell Williams. I'm director of Ethos, small business incubator, co-working spaces, training and development here in downtown Marion. Thanks for joining us today. You're actually joining us at the Citadel building, historic building here on Tower Square Plaza in the small town of Marion, Illinois. We want to thank you for joining us and thank you to our sponsors. And that includes Arcadia Wealth Group, Black Diamond Harley-Davidson and RV, Fowler Heating and Cooling, the Swinford Media Group, Watermark Auto Group Foundation and our producers at Union Street Arts. And you can find Small Town Big Business on your favorite podcast platform. You can also listen and watch on our YouTube channel. Just search Small Town Big Business and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any upcoming episodes. If you're new to the podcast, uh, we interview small business owners and founders and discover why and how they've been so successful in small towns like right here in Marion, Illinois, or throughout Southern Illinois. And in this case, today we're going to go a little bit to the east of Marion, and we're talking today with Andrew Hoffman with Timber Ridge Outposts and Cabins. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. So typically, a lot of the guests that we interview are born and raised Southern Illinois. That is not the case with you. We could tell already that you're not. (laughs) (laughs) That's not true. That's not true. (laughs) She has such an interesting story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in brief, um, I was born and raised in Alaska. And a little farther away from Southern Illinois. Yeah, yeah. just way Uh northwest of here. (laughs) And... um, so that's where I've spent most of my life. I was down here for some college and all of that. Um, and then most recently, uh, for about the last 13 years, I've lived in Juneau, Alaska, in the state capital there, and worked for the state of Alaska in recruitment mm-hmm. and payroll. And um, there, uh, my sister and brother-in-law also lived in Juneau, and my parents lived in Juneau. Mm-hmm. And we were looking to do something a little more in community. Uh, with my bro- or sister and brother-in-law. And so we were looking to purchase a place in Juneau that had rentals or that type of thing. And uh, the doors just kept closing. And also Juneau is a rainforest. So we get like 120 inches of rain a year. Juneau. And uh, so we probably have over 250 days of cloudy and or rain. And as you can imagine, that gets old after a while. Sure. So we made a decision to start looking outside Alaska. And part of that, that dream was hospitality, as well as uh, my sister and brother-in-law are big on gardening and farming. And as you can guess, they were able to do some, but it is limited mm-hmm. in Alaska. Mm-hmm. So um, we were looking across the entire lower you know, U.S. from East Coast to West Coast. Mm-hmm. And my wife searched for treehouse resorts for sale, Mm -hmm. and this popped up. I think that's so fascinating. I'm so glad (laughs) you mentioned that because I think that's just such a fascinating part of the story. Absolutely. And she's loved tree houses since she was little. Like, who doesn't? Mm -hmm. Um, So Now, why hospitality? Why why was that what you were wanting to go after? I think it's a little bit more Jessica's dream. I, you know, I have a business degree, so I can kind of do some of the nuts and bolts behind it. But, you know, whether it's a bed and breakfast, that we looked a little bit at that, we didn't and ultimately go with that. But uh, it's, you know, community is part of our focus. Mm-hmm. And so it's important to give back to the community, take care of the community, part of, and, and so, and with this, we kind of got a, a double combination with the uh, Garden of the Gods outpost because there, you know, somebody might be staying somewhere else and just pop in for ice cream or a Bigfoot t-shirt or whatever it might mm-hmm. be, or others stay with us. But either way, I mean, I see Jessica thrive when she gets to, um, you know, make new products. And um, I'll show you something a little bit from the outpost that mm-hmm. we designed with our children, actually. Mm. And um, so with all of that, you know, see, she searched for that in June of 2022. 
we came and visited. Uh, Marty and Elizabeth are the former owners, and we came here for three days and stayed in a treehouse and stayed in the house and, you know, just looking for is, is this where we're meant to be? And initially, when you hear Illinois, you, you know, either think of Chicago or farmland. And so it was just um, a breath of fresh air to see rolling hills and a garden of the gods and the rock formations and, you know, the cliffs on the Ohio. And I mean, it just was nothing that we envisioned would be in this area. Mm -hmm. And so that was very welcoming. And we hear that all the time. It wasn't at all what they were expecting, right? <laughs> yeah. In a good way. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so we came in June of 2022 and then we sold our homes, sold our cars, packed up a 40 foot container and arrived in October oh. of 2022. And so it's been, you know, obviously a huge life change since our children have only known Alaska. And, um, you know, to be honest, it was a little rocky getting here just from anybody moving halfway across the country and sure. getting them into school and and doing those type of things and so it was like kind of fast and furious and a steep learning curve for us with the business and we had some good resources from you know the former owners but still you got to learn it for yourself mm -hmm. and so yeah that's kind of our story in in getting here from alaska so fascinating <laughs> so what did your kids think when when you said hey we're moving to illinois um, I think I or think maybe even the rest of your family too, because you, you you said you mentioned your parents and others, and so sure. Um, I think it was a mixed bag. Honestly, mm -hmm. there's times where it's like, no, I don't want to leave Alaska, and other times there was some excitement about what that might look like or what that could be. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we did uh, talk to my parents about moving here when we left, and they weren't interested at the time. Uh, in April 2023, they came to visit, and they will be moving here in about a month. Wow. That's, so, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, they're, they, they loved it. Mm -hmm. And they're, well, t just one tidbit from Juno, they got about four feet of snow in January. Mm. Yeah. So my dad's kind of done with snow blowing and doing these different things and warmer climate and, and all of that. And, I mean, that's another part, uh, just... The you know, we've had some a couple gray weeks, but you know it was way mu a lot more in uh, in Juneau and even here. You know, being outside even yesterday, it was warm. It was nice, mm -hmm. and so that's something you don't get. Up that's there. what I love about here. You still get all four seasons, but you don't really get extremes mm -hmm. in any of those seasons. Yeah, so. yeah. definitely. So well, I'm sure you had a vision when you saw the place, you know, things started churning in your mind. Mm -hmm. What do you see it, you know, in the next five years? What, what do you see mm -hmm. your business to be? What do you hope it will be? Yeah, I think it's, first it starts with, you know, uh, yeah, especially in the first year, I see it as just getting dialed in. Mm -hmm. I've been told that by others, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, you can change a few things but just get a good solid foundation of what's going on here. And so that's really what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. We've changed some things, you know, mm -hmm. uh, new products introduced to the outpost. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we're still formulating some of that, mm -hmm. but it's birthed from, you know, we're, we're working, we're like a mission statement and that type of thing mm -hmm. is in process right now. Okay. But, but the nuts and bolts of what we have on that so far is, partly for us as a business, partly for the customers that come to the outpost and partly for those that come to our lodging. And, you know, what that's about, community is a big part of that, that word. And what is involved in that is many things. One, it's providing jobs and taking care of our employees. And, you know, just little things like we had a Christmas party and just thank them, you know, like, this is a two-way street. They don't have to work for us. Mm -hmm. And so the respect that, in my opinion, is necessary as a business owner, um, it's a mutual agreement. Yes, they work and yes, we pay them, but it's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of the foundation there. The same thing goes for our kids. My oldest daughter, 16, she works at the outpost. Mm -hmm. And so training our children in some of those life skills, gardening and farming, you know, we have chickens and um, looking to get more beyond that, but they, 
uh, you know, uh, my, my children are uh, 7, 8, 10, and 16. Mm-hmm. And so whether they're helping bundle wood uh, for the outpost or doing some of those things. Um, and with that, as far as our guests, I mean, we want them to have an enjoyable experience at the outpost and a place to land with like the lodging be to go out and see god's creation around them Mm -hmm. you know at the uh the garden of the gods and one word that has also come into part of our foundation or vision is it's a hebrew word it's the word shalom Mm -hmm. and just briefly i mean yes it means peace but that word means so much more than peace it Mm -hmm. means wholeness it means safety Mm -hmm. our world is chaotic there's a lot of chaos out there and so we want a place people can come and just take a deep breath and Mm -hmm. um you know let the rpms go down a little bit Mm -hmm. and enjoy that beauty because i mean we're just bomb i mean whether it's news positive or negative or all the electronic devices and phone calls it wears any human down. Mm -hmm. And so just having a little space for them is part of that. So what does that look like into Mm -hmm. a plan? I mean, we'll see what all materializes, but um, part of it is, you know, we're looking at maybe getting some sheep and and some other things. Um, You know, Jessica and Anna, Jessica, my wife, Anna's my sister, Mm -hmm. like they they grew um, a bunch of flowers and, and wanting like, kind of a farm experience where guests can come and mm-hmm. see the chickens and pet the sheep and and maybe even feed them. And um, so just uh, developing the outdoor experience a little bit more. Um, and that takes time. You can't just add like 10 different kinds of animals in one year. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of taking that slowly, but we hope mm-hmm. down the road we can advertise that more. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't know, even when someone's m- wounded or there's been trauma, there's something animals that can do that humans can't. And I, mm-hmm. I don't know all the, <laughs> the science behind that, but there mm-hmm. can be a healing in just being with, with those animals. Um, and then further, uh, you know, I mean, there's some dreams of even adding some different units, most of our units. So we have four cabins, two tree houses and two houses. And uh, they're more in the rustic vibe. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jessica, my wife, loves color, loves rainbows. And so I don't know if we'll add a unit that has another, you know, flavor of that. Um, And yeah, so it's I think that's we're still kind of in the the dialing in period. But whether it's on the units front or and, and also five years, I mean, we've been involved some in different festivals and just trying to figure out that community involvement Mm -hmm. one yes it's selling products and people have fun buying some bigfoot thing Mm -hmm. but also um just you know we're we're here and you know contributing some to the school in our county and and wanting to plug into the community we're just not we're much more than a business to make money Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such a peaceful place. You mentioned um, the Garden of the Gods outpost, the cabins, um, and people who come just sort of for that refuge, right? Like we saw a lot of that during the pandemic and people that even lived in uh, major metropolitan areas and were just looking for wide open spaces. And so we saw a lot of folks really discovering or rediscovering Southern Mm -hmm. Illinois for Mm -hmm. those reasons. Um, I believe Garden of the Gods is one of the most visited places in the state of Illinois, but do you have any background on that or were you surprised maybe at how you know far people travel um to come um yeah i don't yeah i don't know about that stat but Mm -hmm. it's probably true one thing that i found out a few months ago that i was pleasantly surprised about is the national parks quarters program that the u.s government did highlighted shawnee national forest Mm -hmm. And on the coin itself yes. is um, is Camel Rock, Camel Rock, mm-hmm. and and you know that area. So it's like wow, whatever what made it onto the U.S. quarter is ten minutes from our mm-hmm. our property. And I I was fascinated with that enough that I made sure we have those coins in mm-hmm. our outposts. So mm-hmm. people like I mean not everybody's about collecting coins, but if they went on a hike at Garden of the Gods and like here's just a little member you know memento of that hike. It's a great souvenir. Yeah. 
And yeah. so for those who don't know, it's it's a mm-hmm. rock, a structure there yeah. at Garden of the Gods that looks like a camel, yeah. right? Yeah, and that's what they picked. And camel I rock. liked it so much, you can't really see it, but my wife had a ring made for me for Christmas oh, cool. out of a quarter. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> out uh-huh. of one of those quarters. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. We just, we're, you know, we're trying to embrace and just, I guess, drink in where we're at now. Sure. I mm-hmm. mean, it's vastly different than where we came from. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's so many good things. Yeah. Well, let's talk about those good things, because if I'm a visitor to Southern Illinois and I come to the outpost, I might be from Northern Illinois or outside the state. And yeah. I say, well, what is there to do around here? How would you answer that question? Um, oftentimes they've already been to Garden of the Gods, um, but if they haven't, we point that out. Um, also, you know, just another nature hike there, Rim Rock Trail mm-hmm. is a good one. And the both of those, Garden of the Gods, Rim Rock, quarter mile long, uh, we have other options. Uh, one of the books we sell in the outpost is like 20 day trips in and around the Shawnee National Forest, so people can grab that. Um, with kids, I always point them to Cave and Rock uh, because it's just such a short walk down to this massive cave that's 50 feet tall and goes back a couple hundred feet. Mm-hmm. And especially when it's really hot, the rushing air through there is cool. And it's it's just a really cool experience yeah, cool. Um, with that. So that's... Um, You're close to the Ohio River also. Yes. And depending on what people want to do, I mean, we go across the ferry at Cave and Rock and go to the Amish communities and just seeing their wares um, is is pretty exciting there. Um, and let's see what else. And do you still have ice cream at the outpost? Absolutely. Okay. I want to make sure. So I, I want to make sure. So <laughs> well, it's funny because when we bought the place, that is the thing we heard the most from the locals. Yeah. Do not change anything about the ice cream. And so we're like, okay, <laughs> we won't change anything about the ice cream. That's great. But yeah, just fun little things like, you know, Sasquatch Sunday and, you know, some mm-hmm. other things and, and people, that, yeah, they love it and they come back for it. And um, it does really well on those hot days. So. so I think it's so interesting. You shared your story about, you know, looking for treehouse cabins uh, and then moving here with your family. And they, they really are a big part of that support system for the business. But what would you say to someone who maybe has that dream? It might not be a treehouse cabin or something in hospitality, but something else has that dream. And they just, I mean, you all really took a big leap. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So what would you say to those folks to kind of encourage them on what that next step is? Yeah. I mean, to me, you know, I did. I'm drawing from, you know, I have a business degree uh, with an emphasis in management. So, you know, I have like those nuts and bolts behind it Mm -hmm. that certainly have helped. But you don't need a business degree to own a business or do a business. I think one delineation that's important is, is it an existing business that you're purchasing or are you starting one up? Mm -hmm. Because I mean, this is one where, yes, we're figuring out more things and new things, but it's been going for a decade. Mm -hmm. Uh, The lodging part and then the outpost opened in 2017. So they worked out some of those kinks. Um, But I would say to them, you know, I mean, one, hopefully you're passionate about what you're doing because that's going to get you through some some barriers and hurdles along the way um even things that you love doing there's going to be some hard parts going through that and um i mean i think one of the hard you know i don't know if i'd say it was hard but you know somewhat challenging is like doing it all at once Hmm. we have a new community we have a new space we have a new business we have new school for our kids and we did that all at once and there wasn't anything bad about that that was just a lot it's a lot (laughs) for mom and dad and kids all at one time um and as some for someone in in business the other key is you know know your resources Mm -hmm. you don't have to be an expert at everything Mm -hmm. and one thing that I've really liked about our setup is, you know, we have our two families. So I oversee like business operations, finance, public relations, and my wife, Jessica, oversees the outpost and ordering and the staff there. Um, Anna, my sister, oversees housekeeping and the staff there and supplies and making sure that's um, working well. And then my brother-in-law, Daniel, oversees uh, maintenance, building a ground maintenance mm-hmm. and, and keeping that running. And, you know, we have employees to help us 
in some of those different things with mm -hmm. larger projects and all of that. So, you know, uh, unless it's a really small business, uh, one woman or one man show is hard to, to pull mm -hmm. off. And so that's part of our support structure is yeah. you hand it off to the person that it's their, their, their area sure. of expertise. Um, and I know, you know, through ethos and, um, I don't remember the name, but like Southern Illinois business development, Small business mm -hmm. development, Central. you know, yeah. those, um, I want to get more connected with sure. that because also like any one topic, like you could do all the research, mm -hmm. but it might take you days and you don't sure. have time where if they're help, you know, that for those that are helping multiple businesses, mm -hmm. sometimes they have that within five minutes because mm -hmm. they did the research mm -hmm. to provide that. So I think for a new business owner, sometimes you get bogged down in a certain piece. Mm -hmm. How am I, you know, what program am I going to use for the finances or mm -hmm. whatever, where, you know, you make the right connection and you can get some of that info really quickly. And that's what they're there for. That's yeah. right. They're to help. So you can focus on the parts you love. Yeah. yeah. Outside the previous owners and your own family, what are the resources? What, who has been in, invaluable to you when you had a question to ask about either your business or where you're at and things like that? Have you found that in this community? Yeah, um, I think part of that's still in process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we rely on our CPA for <laughs> some of those things Absolutely. that, that yeah. we just don't have at the top of our, our mind there. And uh, also, it's been helpful. I mean, there's lodging owners like within Hardin County that we meet with, and they've been there a long time. Is there an organization or it's very informal? Um, it's, it's basically... Um, lodging owners at, that help make decisions even about where some of the the bed tax money that goes directly to Hardin County and where that gets spent mm -hmm. to help bring in more you know greater awareness mm -hmm. to the area mm -hmm. so um, we're making decisions but also they have many more years of experience in this mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. I mean also it's been just into the community type um, Hardin County Independent and Jennifer there was welcoming and you know, we've done a few things in the newspaper and she's lived here. I think she's like a third generation owner of that newspaper. So being able to, you know, um, get some information on the lay of the land and that type of stuff, it's been it's been helpful. And just bumping into our neighbors around us. We, we don't have a ton. We're rural. Mm -hmm. But I mean, everyone seems to be friendly or give me a shout mm -hmm. if you need something and and that type of thing. Um, I'm still working on some of that network that I just gave advice about as sure. far as connecting mm -hmm. and sure. and getting assistance so yeah. so regarding you mentioned marketing mm -hmm. a little bit um just now and that has changed so much you know over the years especially in the last couple of years but um for those listening what strategies have you found to be successful in reaching the folks that you want to come to the outpost and the cabins yeah so a few different things um we do have ads in the scout and also in shawnee force country and and so we have those available at the outpost and i know they're available many other places mm -hmm. so uh it seems like i would say most of our clientele that come oh, upwards of 95 percent are within three to six hours of us interesting you know huh. so yeah there might be somebody from california mm -hmm. or you know south carolina that come but it's really infrequent it that's really interesting you say that because when i've been to garden of the gods usually i look around at license plates and there are or there seem to be mm -hmm. um license plates from you know surrounding states but sometimes there's one that surprises me and it's from yeah from a state farther away i would say yeah predominantly you know illinois and states that touch us mm -hmm. you know missouri uh indiana kentucky tennessee um, is and so that's kind of where our our marketing is focused. So we have the magazine. You know, there's a contribution from our county to Southernmost Illinois Tourism, mm -hmm. and they are um, using marketing dollars into uh, St. Louis Metro and Chicago area, and working to expand that to even mm -hmm. more even south of us, and and trying to draw that they in. They do great work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're thankful for them. And then finally, as we know, social media presence, um, my, you know, my wife has taken that on and we've heard multiple compliments of, of seeing a more significant Facebook, you know, like she'll put out, 
here's the ice cream special of the week or mm -hmm. hey we had a last minute cancellation a tree house is open for this weekend which mm -hmm. is would be unusual and so just different things or the, she did a fun one with our kids and ice cream with the sasquatch across the street and and my son was you know booing sasquatch and then the next <laughs> scene ice creams in his face because yeah, sasquatch isn't happy with that and so i don't know just some fun things that you know our people get a laugh and then you know maybe swing by and yeah. grab a t-shirt or of course. um and since i'm talking about that i just thought i'd show absolutely so we decided that we're going to try to do a uh a t-shirt mm -hmm. once every year so this is the t-shirt for 2023 and That's if good. you're listening on the podcast you're gonna have to go to the youtube channel so you can see this <laughs> yes. because it's very cool but this is a t-shirt that we um designed with our children mm -hmm. and you know he's doing cheers and unfortunately he lost his ice cream there but uh and and then it's kind of hidden but if you 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 probably can't see this but if you mm -hmm. look close there's a two yep. zero two three Mm -hmm. but, and what a fun way for your kids to be involved too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, you know, that's just, you know, them learning in a fun way about business and, yeah. you know, we don't know what all the future holds, but I mean, I firmly believe with, with children, mm -hmm. like, you know, you give them a different opportunities and then they latch on to one. Like uh, we're not trying to ramrod our, to children to choose a certain occupation or anything mm -hmm. like they my youngest daughter loves to sing so we'll see where that goes mm -hmm. you know and uh just different focuses there and um but was it, that part of the plan for your family to be involved and absolutely yeah it's a value absolutely yeah i mean it's I worked for the state of Alaska. There wasn't a whole lot that they could participate in. <laughs> that's highly confidential and all of that kind of stuff. So this is a way that, uh, you know, we can do some of those things with gardening and farming and then include them at different points of the business, you know, go up, drive in the truck and pick up a load of firewood and that's help mm -hmm. get it bundled up so we can mm -hmm. sell it to our guests and mm -hmm. different things like that. So uh, yeah, we're, we want to do that more and more uh, with them, so. Well, sounds awesome. like you're you're glad you took the leap and it has worked out well. Yeah, I, I would say that two, three years ago, I don't know that I would I, I would not have imagined being mm -hmm. here in this capacity, but mm -hmm. just the way the path went and mm -hmm. the doors that closed in Juno, it here we are and we're glad we're here. We're so mm -hmm. we're so glad you're here. Yeah, <laughs> we are. In terms of running businesses, is there like what's the next thing I need to know? Right? Do you have one of those gap areas that you're like I wish I could like learn more and do more of this. Anything for you mm -hmm. and Jessica? Hmm. I, I really, you know, with what we took on initially, it was a lot. So I feel like I, we're not necessarily looking at the moment, at least at expansion, mm -hmm but how can we do what we're already doing better? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and part of that is like even this week, um, renovations and some painting on one of our homes mm -hmm. and um, the outpost door got painted this last week. It's a nice blue and just some things that are more you know uplift and welcoming, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. focused on that. And uh, I do want to connect with, uh, I was given a contact with that, um, business development center as far as mm -hmm. just the, is this the best way on doing mm -hmm. some financial pieces and I'm doing it and I've done it before, but this feels cumbersome. And most of my experience honestly was from uh, managing a business over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so just uh, that to me is my next step is like, okay, is this the best way or is there a more streamlined way? And so we kind of got it going, but mm -hmm. I'm willing to pivot on some of that just to for efficiencies. And, and there are so many thing. great resources at the, you mentioned the Small Business Development Center. So those are all over the country. Um, there's one, as you mentioned, at SIU, but one even closer to you at Southeastern Illinois College. Um, and they provide no cost services. So anything that you or others who are listening go to them for, there's no charge for it. Yeah. Um, but what I also appreciate is, as you mentioned, they can take a very objective look at the business. And sometimes business owners, we get so close to, you know, the situation that sometimes it's, it's difficult to, to pick out those other things. So 
Yeah. Great, great step. Uh, yeah, I've seen the billboard advertisements in Harrisburg for, mm-hmm. for yes. them. They've had yeah. up. So yeah. definitely want to connect. There are so many pieces to your story. Mm-hmm. We don't want to leave any out. What, yeah. have, what have we missed? Or what else would you like to share that we haven't asked? Hmm. Let me think. I think it's just um, circling back to some key pieces that we probably talked about already. Mm-hmm. But, you know, life is short and family matters. The community matters. Each person matters. And, uh, you know, I, I believe God put us on this earth for a purpose. And so, uh, and, uh, you know, prophets are important. But people are more important. Mm-hmm. And, and I've, I believe that when the right things drive what we do, both now and five years down the road, um, the financial end will work out. And I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, we want I'm, we to follow good business practices mm-hmm. and all of that. But what is driving it should be uh, our communities, our counties, and how best to serve them. And you know what? There's, a, a, there's times we're going to take the less profitable route because it's more beneficial to our employees or our families or our community. Yeah. And sometimes that is the right choice. Hmm. So I think that's, um, yeah, that's where our hearts are at and what uh, is really important. That's excellent. Mm-hmm. So Andrew, how would I find your business, both physical lo- location and online location? Yeah. Um, I mean, we do have a website, timberridgeoutpost.com, mm-hmm. and, and people can go there just to, uh, to book lodging. You can book it right online. You can give us a call. Our phone number's there as well. Okay. And, uh, but you can do that. And then Garden of the Gods Outpost, if you look okay. that up, uh, you'll find it. It's 281 Carver's Ridge Road. There you go. But, uh, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be looking. Uh, but yeah. swing on by um, because that's, yeah. I think you'll, it, it's a good addition to the hike, a hike at the Garden of the yeah. Gods, whether you want to mm-hmm. grab some nachos or a hot dog or ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah. And, um, but yeah. And Come. when we say hike, it, it's not a difficult hike. So for those who are like, I'm not a hiker, it is a beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful it, place to go. It's well groomed. Uh, mm-hmm. You walk like five minutes and you see some beautiful views regardless yes. of the year mm-hmm. i mean right now it's uh it, you basically are looking at the rock formations but in spring the rolling hills with the greenery and in summer and then if you show up in october which is a um honestly our busiest month at the outpost is mm-hmm. october with the fall colors yeah, it's, beautiful. And it's, it's just it amazing so beautiful. yeah well, andrew hoffman thank you for joining us yeah andrew, thanks for mm-hmm. the invite garden of the gods outpost and timber ridge outpost and cabins thank you so much it's been a pleasure Mm -hmm. yeah my pleasure welcome to southern illinois thank you (laughs) we want to thank everyone for being part of our small town big business community for watching and listening especially we want to thank our sponsors and that includes again arcadia wealth group black diamond harley davidson and rv valor heating and cooling swinford media group the watermark auto group foundation and of course our producers at union street arts if you need any production audio video video please reach out to luke o'neill at union street arts if you want to know more about ethos we're a small business incubator co-working spaces training and development opportunities here in southern illinois reach out to me i'm russ williams and you can email me at russell at watermarkethos.org or find us on facebook it's ethos at the citadel and again i'm deb barnett with southern illinois now you can find us at southern or on our social media uh, channels as well Um, And don't forget to look for Small Town Big Business on your favorite podcast platform and also on our YouTube channel. Um, Don't forget to subscribe as well so that you don't miss any upcoming episodes. Thanks again for joining us and until next time.